So based off of what opposing counsel has stated that the defense um, would like to plead guilty, um, or the defendant would like to plead guilty, uh, the, def the defendant would actually like to plead duress, you know, once you get there. Your Honor, if I may? Uh, you may. Your Honor, we have an email from the defense counsel, if you'd like to see it, um, showing that they had originally pled guilty to the account of aggravated murder. Defense, do you have a response? Um, I'm afraid that we did not submit any email um, to opposing counsel. Uh, uh, perhaps it could have been part of the Midlands uh, uh, hacker virus that's been going on. Tech Chair, can we get that up, please? Your Honor, right there, as you can see, they are saying that they would like to plead guilty to aggravated murder. Now, Your Honor, if the defense wants to back out of the plea agreement we arranged, we're going to remove the offer and there will be no longer any plea offers. We already take, uh, we are ready to take this to trial for full disclosure. Once we get the sentencing hearing, we're going to ask for a maximum sentence, death by Amy Schumer comedy special. Uh, defense, is that, um, does that sound right that, uh, you are wanting to withdraw any pleas that you make? It sounds like you're not ma or making a plea for guilt anymore. Your no, honor, I, if I could actually drunk, sorry, jump in here. I was very drunk last night when I sent that email. I apologize. Um, so I, I just wanted to apologize for that. I'm so sorry. No, yeah, your Honor. Sorry, just... Your Honor. We had a wild day or wild night last night. So just to be clear, we're okay with the maximum sentence of death by Amy Schumer comedy special. Um well, we'd actually like to back out of the plea and plea for duress instead, as that is our intent to uh plea for duress. Yes, and by doing that, you're aware that that the, the prosecution would like to, once we get to the sentencing hearing, ask for the maximum sentence of death by Amy Schumer comedy special. Um, if convicted, then yes. Okay. Hey, what's up, YouTube? We're back with another episode. And today we're going to be talking about prosecuting Poe Cameron. I'm here with my co-counsel, Mr. Ahad Khan hey, and Ms. Melanie Lopez. What's up, guys? And they're going to be my co-host today for this episode. Mr. Fries, you're going to need to take some notes about this. Okay, so the defendant woke up and had murder on his mind. And where was the defendant? Trying to beat Miss Emery Sands to death. She was in a puddle of her own blood. And we probably can't even show it on YouTube because we'd probably get demonetized. We have to prove to you that he committed attempted murder beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the highest burden in our court system, which Mr. Fries will probably tell you about. But it's not as high as opposing counsel was last night. As you can tell, they had a rowdy night last night in Charlotte County. How we're going to show that to you today is with three witnesses. The first one... I can't really remember what they're, oh, Cosmos. Cypress Cosmos is going to be our first witness. And they are going to be telling you all about, I think they're pretty rich. So they're probably going to start talking about that. Um, I think they saw Mr. Cosmos, or they saw Mr. Cameron. They might have had a relationship. They're going to get into a lot of things. Next, we're going to show you, uh, we're going to bring up Miss Sands herself. She's going to talk a lot about uh, what happened to her, and honestly, I, if I were her, I wouldn't have gotten beat up as much. I probably would have fought back more, um, but she's going to talk all about that, and then finally, FBI agent Char Burke is going to come up, and he's going to talk a lot about stuff we know. We're going to show you that Poe Cameron had murder on his mind when he woke up that morning. I hope this video doesn't get demonetized. It probably will, but I have to pay off my student loans, so Please, YouTube, please don't demonetize this. And at the end, my co-counsel, again, Mr. Ahad Khan, 
will come before you and wrap it all up and you'll know for sure there won't be a shadow of doubt in your mind that Poe Cameron did this. Thank you guys. Prosecution, thank you for that opening statement. Um, I hope you don't get demonetized as well. Uh, Defense, would you like to uh, proceed with yours? Yes, Your Honor. Quickly before I begin, permission to play a hype up song on my behalf? Permission is so granted. Absolutely. All right, sorry, Your Honor. It's just a tradition of mine I like to set up. All right, well, if you're feeling good, if you're feeling uh, hyped up, you may proceed. Absolutely, Your Honor. Members of the jury, you're probably thinking to yourself right now, you, where did this guy go to law school? Well, I went to Harvard. You're probably thinking to yourself, you went to Harvard? My answer, like it's hard. You know what? It isn't. This isn't hard. This is day to day for me, okay, members of the jury? Because this case is as good as shut. Because they were threatened, coerced, and forced, and not in a good way. That the prosecution isn't giving you all the pieces of the puzzle. They're not telling you about the threats, the coercion, and the force that put Poe Cameron at Miller Tech. Now, we're going to walk you step through step, tell you about Charbrook, tell you that they're not a sex-positive person, which is a crime in of itself, but that's not why we're here today. No, we're here today because Poe Cameron was forced by Charbrook to be at Miller Tower without their consent, without their protection. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that's just reckless. And that's why our justice system is here today. Now, the prosecution has brought forth the charge of attempted murder. Ooh, murder. Members of the jury, you're going to find that charge. That's not watertight because they have a burden in today's case to prove that to you beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the highest burden in our justice system, baby. We're coasting here. We don't have any issue because they're not gonna meet that burden. It's like a rabbit trying to jump over something that's 10,000 feet tall. That's not gonna happen, but we're here anyway for the fun of it because I love my job, the stand. Now, first, you're going to have the pleasure of speaking with Poe Cameron himself. He's going to tell you he's a kinky guy. He is sex positive. And he's going to go as far as to tell you that he was forced to be there by Agent Sharberg when a black van came up and didn't offer him candy and instead forced him to be there. Next, we're going to call. Parker Orloff. No, we're not. We're going to call June Cage to the stand and about how Char Burke, well, their integrity was compromised. They had bias. Again, not sex positive. After all that, my co-counsel, Mr. Moment, he's going to get up here. He's going to ask you one question. Going to ask you if you're having fun. And then he's going to ask a second question. And he's going to ask you to find... Poe Cameron, not guilty, because he didn't do it. Awesome, thanks. Hi, my name is Cypress Cosmos, and I will be auditioning to play Cypress Cosmos in the Miller Tower Halloween Heist docuseries today. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I have to hold on because the new Cosmos. Uh, not out till next week. Objection, Your Honor. That wink was horrible. A, a defense would like to have Miss Cosmos do that wink again. We would be amendable to her doing the wink again. Okay, just one more time for the for the record. Sustained, Miss Cosmos. How was that? 
I did it's okay. Tongue. I'll let it pass. I did. I did the tongue. That I saw that. That was very good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, the repetition, and we will. Now, Miss Cosmos, do you do anything useful for this case? Well, um, I was part of the planning committee for the. So he. Children. Hospital. Annual. Charity. What was the name of it again? It was Sohe Children Hospital. Do you want to run that again? No, the Sohe Children Hospital Annual Charity Auction Gala. What type of items did you auction off at that gala? Well, unfortunately for me, we weren't auctioning off husbands because boy, do I need one. And Mrs. Delaporta's husband is quite the looker. It's just a bunch of boring stuff like art. I'm more interested in the performing arts. They say that true artists make themselves the art and fake artists make their art with paint. Um, I was wearing my slutty mouse costume as every girl does on Halloween. Did you see anyone there? No, I was really just focused on Mr. De La Porta's husband. Did you see anyone else that night? No, I just said that. Miss Cosmos, did you see anyone else that night? I don't know, did I? Oh, wait, wait, oh, oh yes. I, I saw two individuals coming from beyond the event stage and area. One of them was dressed as a slutty serial killer, so last year. And the other one, oh. Mom, I'm in the middle of an audition. Mom, I will call you back later. Oh, so, so, so sorry. So you want to read, you want to read that one? Before. I'm so sorry, yes. One of them was a slutty serial killer, so last year, and the other one was a slutty firefighter. They had like an... Were you able to see who that person was? Yes, ma'am. I, I could see their whole side profile for like 10 seconds. I knew it was 10 seconds because that's how long my ex-boyfriend would last until we made direct eye contact. I, I could spot him anywhere. Just for point of reference, who is your ex-boyfriend? Poe Cameron. Thank you. Would you be able to identify them in court today? I would. I mean... I didn't spend a whole lot of time with them, 10 seconds thing, but I did spend a lot of time with them. Could Poe Cameron turn their camera on so Miss Cosmos has an opportunity to identify them? Uh, Your Honor, unfortunately, Poe Cameron is actually camera shy. No, you're camera shy, you're camera shy. You're right camera here. shy. Miss Cosmos, are you able to identify your ex, Poe Cameron? Yes, he's wearing the blue tie. I mean, I would just say that I had the better breakup glow up. Just saying, just saying. What Very the right they were wearing. I mean, who wears spooky masks on Halloween? As my true queen, Karen Smith says, you have to dress slutty and sexy on Halloween. Otherwise it's anti-feminist. Share, can you screen share exhibit 23? Oh my God. What am I showing you? That's the mask I saw and wearing the night of Halloween 2022. So you didn't see anything? Oh, well, I, I saw Mr. Cameron gesture to this guy in the ski mask, make an illicit gesture. Uh, I, I don't really do illicit gestures on camera in auditions. I don't You're know. fine. Okay, and then Ms. Cameron started, or Mr. Cameron started to move something metal around their finger like this, make an illicit gesture. It, it looks like a ring. Okay, can't even shove me aside and say, guess you'll live to see another day. I mean, losing me is heartbreak, but don't gotta go around killing people about it. How did Ms. Sands look on the floor? I mean, she was lying in a pool of blood and her eyes, it was all sort of swollen up, sort of. It was so awful. I couldn't even ask her where the weed was. Thank you. Um, we'll contact you back on email about the part. Oh, okay. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Miss Cosmos. Uh, wonderful audition. Uh, I hope you break away. Thank you. I, I, Metaphorically. I, I was going to say, because your client over there has said some really hurtful and violent things. So you, you mean fi figuratively, right? Yes, figuratively. Um, while I believe he is not guilty for attempted murder, I do believe he is guilty for letting a baddie like you go. Oh, Such a shame. You. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But, Miss Cosmos, you don't really know why Mr. Cameron said those things, right? Said that you'll live to see another day. No, I mean, he used to tell me he loved me, and I don't know why he didn't say why he said that. Because obviously he doesn't. House down. You know, but that's a story for another time. Of course. We should go get happy hour together. Of course. Um, I'll, I'll let you know all the details. Yeah, toxic masculinity. It's something that we need to tackle. Yes. But you mentioned you saw a ring, a, or a metal object or a ring on Poe Cameron's finger. Yeah, and I don't know who got him that because I didn't get him that. So he must be screwing some other chicks now because I didn't get him that. Why would you pay some why would you pay so much attention onto something that you didn't even know he had? Well, that's what I meant. Now he's screwing some other chicks and I really liked his hands, so I paid close attention to him. Just want to let you know that you have to tell me the tea about how you and Mr. Cameron broke up. Oh my gosh, yes. No, we'll exchange numbers at the end of this, like once Cam gets thrown into jail and killed well, by we'll, that Amy Schumer woman. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Okay. Well, okay. It was Thank nice you. talking to you, Miss Cosmos. Thank you. Thanks. Your Honor, I have no further uh, Miss Cosmos, you are excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, call me back. Check me out on LinkedIn, Instagram to make sure that I get this part. I really want to play uh, myself in this docuseries. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Miss Sams? Well, I was the top alpha doll at, as the director of Miller Tower. You say was, Miss Sams. Are you not the director of security anymore? No, some beta came out of nowhere and attacked me. One with the uh, Michael Myers mask came at me screaming like a wild animal and started beating me. Wait, so you're saying you got your ass beat? <laughs> Couldn't be me. Yes, my three betas. I don't really want to, it was traumatized. Okay, sure, Miss Sands, whatever you say. Now, what did you do after you saw that helicopter? Well, that's when I saw the three betas get out of the helicopter. Objection, Your Honor, after the last question as to seeing the helicopter. All right, what is your objection? Your Honor, the State of Mid <clears throat> Defense Council objects lack of foundation. The other questions that opposed, that opposed Emery Sands said, they were said in an extremely fun way, but this set was not fun. We ex simply asked Emery Sons, be more fun. Be more fun. Be more fun. Your Honor, if I may? You may. You were getting to the fun. He can wait. Well, prosecution, if you promise that there will be fun, then uh, you may proceed. Yes, Your Honor. That's the mask I saw with I poke camera intend to kill Emory Sands. That's me. So you're saying that you are Emory Sands? Oh, yeah. And that Poe Cameron intended to kill you? That's what it says, yes. That's what I read. This one ugly beta came at me and said, P, you, get a, you better get rid of that guard, P. And I was like, what? I already had, I read my pee. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Beat me. What oh. did they do when they beat me? Your Honor, at the lack of um, emphasis, we simply want to know how an alpha got beat up by a beta. Your Honor, may I? You may. You were getting there. Well, if you are getting there, then I'll allow it. But I'm interested to hear that answer as well. Now, Miss Sands, how were you an alpha? 
beat up by three betas. Look, I might be an alpha, but that doesn't mean I have to be a strong alpha. I'm a smart alpha. Look at my muscles. There's none. But the important thing is that they took me by surprise. And uh, correction, your honor, substantially <clears throat> um, misleading the jury. May I be heard? You may. Your honor, an alpha isn't one who has no muscles. An alpha is smart, but an alpha has muscles, a lot of them. Your honor, opposing counsel is misleading the jury by saying that an alpha does not have muscles. Your honor, this is the real world. In the real world, alphas have muscles. Prosecution, uh, what is your response or do you have an example of an alpha without muscles? Well, your honor, firstly, that's simply Mr. Moment's opinion and he's a beta, so we don't take his opinion very valid. Second of all, clearly Miss Sands is an alpha. <laughs> I, I could tell by that. It is very clear she is an alpha. <laughs> yes. Overruled, you may. But you tried fighting back like the alpha you are, right? I did, I did. I even growled at them. You growled at them? Yeah, I did. Grrr. Yeah. Uh, after they hit me that hard, they fixed my attention span. So I was able to focus on my, well, my lack of my um, alpha gun. And that's when I saw the beta having had, he had my gun, my alpha gun. Like you can only have that gun if you have an alpha identification. And did that beta have the alpha identification? No, like he's a beta, what the fuck? But you wanted to put holes in them like SpongeBob. Yeah, you know, I love SpongeBob, but he's kind of holy, many holes. The beta with the Michael Myers mask said nothing. Sorry, I'm gonna do my beta voice. Now, I'll translate that since some people can't understand that beta language. Yeah. You idiot. How could you let this guard get the jump on you? Don't think I won't kill them if I have to, because nothing is coming between me and getting what I'm owed. Is that what you said, Miss Sands? <laughs> That's what the person in the Michael Myers mask said? Beta. Yes, the beta. But the person in the Michael Myers mask? Yes, the beta. I had to learn how to walk again. To be an alpha again, that's why I don't see my alpha self as much. Yeah, that was noticeable. No further questions. Honor. <clears throat> now, Mrs. Sands, are you sure you're an alpha? Are you questioning my identity as an alpha? Let me I walk you through. Alpha. You got beat up by three betas. Betas, Mrs. Sands. Betas. <laughs> Betas beat you up, Mrs. Sands. Asked and answered, Your Honor. Oh. Yes, Your Honor. Please. Your Honor, it's just going to be much more fun to hear it from Mrs. Sands. Please. Mrs. Sands, were you beat up by three betas? Yes, but like I said, they had an upper hand with something in or on their hand that was metal and my alpha gun. Thank you for your answer, defense. You make. Gonna... You get offended as an alpha. Of course, we have feelings too. I'm not really understanding your question. Mrs. Sands, but you're an alpha. Your alpha is in your brains, correct? That's right. You, that, yet you can't answer. You, yet you can't understand my question. It's because of the beta language. There's a barrier. Point of order, Your Honor, M Mrs. Santa just accused me of being a beta. Ms. Sands, please do not um, insult the defense counsel. It's not an insult, but okay. Your Honor, objection. Made the witness cry. Vince, your response? Your Honor, 
Your Honor. <clears throat> Alphas don't cry. Mr. Sand is not an alpha. Your Honor, opposing counsel wouldn't understand because he's a beta. Real alphas have emotion. No further questions. Your Honor, real alphas don't get beat up. Your al real alphas don't get into <laughs> comas. All right. I, I get the debate right now. Um, that seems like a matter to be decided by the jury. If you could just continue with your cross. Uh, Your Honor, no further questions. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yes. Uh, my name is a uh, Sharberg. That is a spelled with a B, a O, a R. A, excuse me. In my home country of uh, Kazakhstan, we say uh, letters uh, different. Yes. Objection, Your Honor. This witness can't spell. I'd actually be more than happy to voir dire this witness on that point. Your Honor, may I respond? You may. Your Honor, it's 2024. I asked that Mr. Freeze be inclusive. Uh, Agent Burke is not from the United States. And as he just explained, he spells letters differently in Kazakhstan. Your Honor, if I could respond. You may. Your Honor, there's actually nobody more inclusive than me. Michelle Obama, she didn't just end up the first lady. No, I was helping her along the way because I believe in feminism. I believe in the immigrants that make this country so great. I am so unbelievably inclusive. I'm actually incredibly offended right now. And I think you should sustain my objection for that. Your Honor, may I respond to that? You may. If Mr. Freeze is in fact inclusive, then he wouldn't be bothering to ask for a voir dire for a witness who confused up letters in the language from Kazakhstan versus English. Your Honor, I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. I understand. And I uh, thank you for your inclusivity. Um, but I do understand that Kazakhstan does have a very difficult um, alphabet. So I will allow him to continue. Start with the uh, violent crime squad in Boston. I was uh, promoted to senior special agent and I sent to Iraq to assist with counterterrorism of the bad guys. But when I trade for my wife, I wanted to do something less dangerous. So I come back to US and A and was assigned to the art crime team. I love US and A. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love. Yes. Can you play that security camera footage for the members of the jury? No. It was uh, gone in a cyber malware attack, like my wife, who is dead. However, there were notes from the footage, and I remember. I bring diagram to show more. It is uh, very nice, yes. Yes, a helicopter land on the roof. And At point of order, Your Honor. I'm I'm having a lot of difficulty visualizing this. I understand that Agent Burke is trying their best, but if they could go ahead and act out a helicopter in person for me, I, I just I my memory has been kind of jogged since this trial started. Your Honor, may I respond? You may. Your Honor, we're amenable with Agent Burke doing a quick demonstration of how a helicopter flies. Uh, Your Honor, oh. actually, if I could add one more thing, I want the attorney to do it as well. I, it just really helped my memory, you know. Your Honor, I'll only do it if Mr. Freeze does it first. So if it, Agent Burke does it, then Mr. Freeze, and then I'll do it. Yeah, I believe uh, I believe so that we all can get a good understanding. Uh, if you guys would go ahead and just demonstrate the helicopter for the court quickly, that would be uh, very appreciated. Yes, Your Honor. Are you ready, Agent Burke? Yes, I have never been more ready. Are you ready, Mr. Freeze? Oh, you know it. All right, let's do it. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, back, back to your testimony, Agent. After they break into Miller Tower, what happens next? They, uh, they run, run, running like my brother below when he go crazy down the stairs into the uh, security office uh, here. Yes, I look at her medical paper and photo of injury on body. Would not recommend. Yes. We conduct a search of Miss Cameron's house and we find a ring. Wow, wow, we woo. Would you recognize of that wow, wow, we woo ring if I were to show it to you? Yes. Seven. Objection, Your Honor. 
as to this is incredibly boring. Maybe heard. Prosecution, do you have a response? Yes, or, yes sorry. Uh, defendant, uh, you may be heard. Yes. Yeah, Your Honor, I just, like the whole ring thing, I mean, wow, wow, wee, woo, whatever. I just, I don't really see it. And it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of dull in the whole thing. First, we had Emery Sands get up here. Wah, wah, wah. And now we have this guy talking about a ring. I need something more fun. I like the whole helicopter thing, but this has just gone too far. Your Honor, if may I respond? You may. If opposing counsel is amenable, I'm amenable to having Agent Burke reenact the attack that happened to Miss Sands with the camera being Miss Sands. I'm you thinking about it. Mm -hmm. I think he wants to do it, Your Honor. It'd be fun, Your Honor. Your Honor, I just wouldn't want him to strain a muscle. So I'll I'll go ahead and sit this one out. It's all right. I'll let them have I'll give him some leeway, as you would say. So well, Your Honor, okay. I kind of want to see it. So, Agent Berg, can you reenact for the members of the jury how Miss Sands was attacked by the defendant? Yes. She she looked as if dead. Um, yes. Uh, she 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 get punched and she get punched and she come out with the claw until she is uh, not moving and she looked like she is going to die. I'd like to move my objection to 403 because this is incredibly prejudicial. It's going to show that my client was incredibly sleepy when he sent these text messages. Mayor and when, somebody, when somebody's that sleepy, they just like, come on, man, like, give him some lead. Come on, work with him. Apologies, Mr. Freeze. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, womp womp. Just because the defendant's words make him look bad doesn't mean it's unfairly prejudicial. They're just trying to use 403 as a I don't like it button. That's not how it works, Your Honor. Respectfully. Your Honor, that's exactly how it works. Your Honor, that's exactly how I've done this a million times. I went to Harvard, okay? You don't get into Harvard and have bad 403s. That's not me. All right. Uh, looks like it happened. Well, I respect the uh, attachment to the rule uh, and your Harvard background. I will allow it uh, as admitted. Um, because uh, just because he was sleepy doesn't uh, negate the text themselves. All right, all right, all right, Your Honor, that's okay. Thank you. Super, uh, super duper awesome cross examination, Your Honor. I'm ready for it. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, Agent Charbert. Uh, that is that's your real name. Good afternoon. Yes. Oh yeah, we'll do this. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you have a uh, wonderful uh, face. Oh, I know it. Don't worry. I almost went to modeling school, but, you know, the brain was working harder than the face, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Uh, you know me. Yes. If you force Poe Cameron to commit the crime, say what? No. Almost got you there. And, yeah, you were married to your wife for a while as well, right? Yes, until she died. Um, but then I find a new wife who I trade for 10 gallon of insecticide. That's a really great offer. I'll have to take you up on it. Yeah. Anyway, Agent Char Burke, you actually initially asked to be involved in this case, huh? Yes, it was a, a big case. I like. Yeah, I like big things too. Objection, yeah. Your Honor, who? Response, Your Honor? Seen. Your Honor, the who, what, when, where, what, how, that's, eh, we're getting there. And if opposing counsel could just let me kind of Jesus take the wheel a little bit, I'll get all steers in the right direction. They don't have to worry. Very brief response to that, Your Honor. Go ahead. I didn't finish my objection. It was actually, Your Honor, who asked? Because I didn't. Point of order, Your Honor, we got to control this guy a little bit. Come on, he's getting, come on, you got to have my back a little bit, man. I do, I do that. Um, I'm sorry, defense. Did you have a quick response? Or no, not as the defense. Prosecution. No. I'm sorry. Prosecution. Did you have a quick response? Your Honor, he went to Harvard, and that's his best response. He's not Mike Ross. I don't need a response. Harvard's been kind of in the dumps as of late. Okay, let's let's just move. Well, um, well, if he says that there is a plan for where this is going, I would like to uh, see where it is headed. So I will let it. I will let it. Uh, happen all right so if poe cameron were to get up here and say that you guys knew each other then one of you would have to be lying huh 
Yes, it is probably the one who is on trial. Well, regardless of it, if or not they're on trial, the one that's lying, their pants would be on fire, wouldn't they? If I do not know uh, this expression, what you say? Well, Agent Burke, it's probably awfully hot in your room, huh? Um, no, I am quite the chilly. And no, you're not. You're very hot right now because yeah. your pants are on fire, aren't they? Objection, Your Honor. Does Mr. Freeze have a crush on Mr. on Agent Burke? He just no, that's not true. Your Honor, that's not true. That's not true, Your Honor. Your Honor, let's leak his group chat text messages. No, no, Your Honor. Your Honor, that's a lot of private messages. They're going to need a search warrant for that. What about a PlayStation party chat or an Xbox party chat? Oh, we can do that. I'm good on there. You sure? We'll just play it safe. Okay. So, if... Poe Cameron got up here and said that you weren't sex positive. And then you'd say he'd be lying, wouldn't you? Yes, because of many reasons. Um, number one is my sister. She is actually a number one prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. Well, that's actually not correct because according to my notes right here, Agent Burke, you're actually not sex positive. Uh, that is a uh, fake. And, all right, Agent Burke. Uh, you reviewed the investigation of Detective Bamani, the lead detective on this case? Yes, and I did a uh, yeah. great job. And you know that there were a lot of quotes that said Poe was scared. Yeah, it is a... Objection, Your Honor? Yes. Your say. Vince, do you have a response? All right, they didn't teach us the whole hearsay thing at Harvard, but uh, I'll give my best shot. Uh, Your Honor, this isn't hearsay because we're actually not using it for the truth of the matter. We're using it to show that this witness saw that stuff and turned a blind eye like a bad investigator. May I respond, Your Honor? You may. Womp womp, they're using it for the truth of the matter. Your Honor, their entire contention is that the defendant was forced to commit this crime. They have to be using it for the truth of the matter, that it goes to one of their essential elements. They're not using it for the truth of the matter, then it doesn't matter. Mr. Free should have learned hearsay at Harvard. I guess Harvard's not as good as he thought. How much did you pay, by the way? Do you still have student loans? I always aren't a full scholarship, I'll have you know. They very much value their, you know, more mentally challenged students. So let's keep it respectful in here, please. I think that makes a little bit of sense. Um, Your Honor, if that's the case, I'll withdraw my objection just to be a little fair for Mr. Freeze. Thanks, man. Yeah, it will be withdrawn. Thank you. It, well, Regardless, Agent, you're still here testifying against Poe Cameron today. Yes, because he do a uh, one to a knockout to Miss Sands. All right. Um, well, sounds like Bert. Thank you. Um, thank you. Oh, wait, actually, Your Honor, just real quickly, I actually wrote a song for Agent Bert, oh. and I'd love to be able to play it real quick, if that's allowed. I like to hear it, Your Honor. Yeah. You're, you're good with that? I would love to hear it, Your Honor. Yes, me as well. I think it would be a benefit to the court to uh, to hear it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Your Honor, I, I'm still learning, so just if, if I, we could be a safe space. Yes. He does such a good job. That's it, Your Honor. It's still work. Well, it's incredible. Honor, so, point of order for the record, I think Mr. Free should become a guitarist instead of an attorney, but just as a point of record. Modeling guitarist, attorney, it sounds like he's got plenty of pathways to choose from. Yeah. First of all, Mr. Cameron, why in the world did you break up with Miss Cosmos? I mean, come on, you had a perfect opportunity right then and there. She was a baddie. She had all the green flags. I, like, I can't believe this, man. Like, that is so disappointing. And you didn't even uh, tell any of us this. I'll get to that. But I think this, sto this story needs to start at the beginning. Okay, well, whatever you say. Hi, my name is Poe Moadib Cameron. And I do want to be clear, technically, I have violated parole. So you can get me on that. That's fine, I'll plead guilty to that one. But I'm scared and I want to go home. Do you know why you're here today? I'm here to talk about a time that I was threatened, coerced, and forced into robbing Miller Tower. 
and not in a good way. Like the times I had with my new girlfriend, Cyprus, who, by the way, knows that when two people get together lovingly and share their souls, it's okay to cry. You can shed a tear or two or three or four. Are you going to break your new girlfriend's heart this time? Well, okay, it's not real. She's not real, but okay. Next well, question. Verification. What was your relationship with Memphis like? I mean, can't say it was too good. At 13, Memphis found 4chan, and from there he swallowed the red pill, and that was it for him. And I saw him in September. He, he told me he turned over a new leaf. He told me he'd escaped the Matrix. He told me I could, too. I up with Memphis, and it didn't take me long to figure out that that job wasn't exactly legal. It wasn't like one Objection, of his drop shipping companies. Kind of... Objection, Your Honor. This is kind of yes. boring. Can we get subway servers on the side? Uh, Texture actually has a video prepared. It would help make it a lot more interesting. You That's know, I'm amendable to that, Your Honor. I have ADHD, so, you know, those those little family guy clips with a little mobile game playing on TikTok really, really gets me going. Thank you, Texture. Thank you. You may continue. For me, and not just because every time I see a painting, I get sent into a blind, murderous rage, but because I just didn't want to. Look, if it were up to me, I never would have set foot in that tower. I don't want to see Cyprus again. But when I was walking home, this black van stopped in front of me. You know, at first I thought to myself, not again, Poe. You're not falling for it again. You know, I didn't want to buy fake weed again. Um, but, but this voice said... Objection, Your Honor? That's, that's racist that he described it as a black van. Like, it's, it's 2024. Uh, Ends your response. Uh, Your Honor, the color of the van has nothing to do with the race of the van. Uh, Mr. Cameron is just describing what he saw. Um, and he saw a black van approach him. Therefore, it has nothing to do with the uh, van's ethnicity or um, any racial prejudice that Mr. Cameron may or may not have. So you're saying, yes, yes, you may respond. Oh, apologies. Sorry. I was just watching the subway service video. Uh, Your Honor, it's certainly racist to describe the van as black. Your Honor, they can just say it was a van. Uh, to go that step and say it was a black van is racist and it, it can hurt a juror's feelings. And I ask that that be stricken from the record. Your Honor, if I could just jump in here real quick. <laughs> if it would help at all, I have a little note that says not racist. So if that would help the members of the jury know that I'm not racist, I'm cool. Your Honor, may I respond? You may. Honor, essentially, that's the same as saying I have black friends and because of that, I'm not racist. But that's that's still racist, Your Honor. Racist people say that. I think the defendant is racist. And for that point, the black part of black van should be stricken. You know, um, Your Honor, response? Yes, quickly. Well, you know what they say, Your Honor. Go woke or go broke. So I'm afraid this attorney is trying to wokeify uh, my client's direct. Um. Well, I do agree with your initial point of defense about how um, the color of the paint is not the same as the uh, ethnicity of the car or its make. Uh, it could be a black Jeep or a black uh, Ford for that matter. So uh, I will. Um, sorry, the subway is really getting to me, too. So I will um, allow for you to continue with the description of it being a black van. Well, the minute I got inside, I saw this man in a suit. He said that he was part of the FBI, so naturally, I believed him, because legally, they're not allowed to lie about that stuff. He said his name was Agent Burke, and after explaining the difference between the Kazakhstan alphabet and the American alphabet, really eye-opening. I was disappointed that Mr. Fries didn't know that. Very different. Uh, I, but when I said I didn't want to help him, he told me he'd make sure we both disappeared, and then he took out a coin and he made it disappear in front of me. So I knew I was dealing with a magician. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I just asked that if Mr. Cameron has a coin, he would try to reenact that scene and try and make that coin disappear. I uh, don't response, have a coin. Response, Your Honor. Response, yes. Um, well, Mr. Cameron actually said that Agent Burke was the one that made the coin disappear. So if Agent Burke is a magician, he would be able to do it, but my client is not a magician, so therefore he wouldn't be able to make the coin disappear. 
Your Honor, my objection is just simply asking him to reenact it to his best of his abilities. As the defense had the ability to cross-examine Agent Burke and ask him to make a coin disappear, and yet they failed to do so. So because Midlands doesn't allow rebuttal witnesses, I just ask that the defendant be the one to reenact the magic trick. Uh, response, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, we would be amendable to that. However, with keep it, with the jury being kept in mind that Mr. Cameron is not a magician, so he would probably not be able to successfully make the coin disappear. That's fine with us, Your Honor. For illustrative purposes, uh, I will allow Mr. Cameron to attempt to make show us what he saw when the coin disappeared. Thanks, Your Majesty. Come on, Poe. Don't mess it up this time. If you don't participate in the heist, I will make you disappear. And all of a sudden, it was gone. Just like that. Thank you for that illustration and a very good job. You may continue. As soon as I agreed, the van stopped and he threw me out. Not before he took my, my wallet, my socks, my shoes, and my heart. Objection, Your Honor. Womp womp. Get over it. Uh, your response, Your Honor. Uh, go ahead. Uh, opposing counsel is clearly enforcing values of toxic masculinity. Mr. Cameron is allowed to feel heartbroken and feel sad about certain things and allowed to express those emotions. Your Honor, may I respond? Yes. Your Honor, respectfully, womp womp. He can get over it. He's a big boy. Uh, response, Your Honor? Yes, go ahead. Opposing counsel can also get over it if my client ever mentions his emotions. Your Honor, may I respond? <laughs> Your Honor, that odd hominem uh -huh. attack was a little bit mean. I'm a little hurt by that. Mm -hmm. Womp womp. I'll withdraw the objection if that's the case. Defense, I think you made a great point. Um, continue. Thank you, Dad. Did you ever find what this job that Agent Burke mentioned? I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. So I booked a plane ticket to North Sentinel Island. I got my bags and I was going to get out of there. Your Honor, permission to screen share uh, a copy of Exhibit 26. You have permission? Tech Chair, if you can take down Subway Surfers, unfortunately, that's going to have to come down. Yeah, it was getting good. Mom, Your Honor, that's quite the interesting email. I don't see an email, Your Honor. Who is that? Well, <laughs> glad you asked. We'll get to that, opposing counsel. Don't worry. Mr. Cameron, who's that person in the photo? Well, that's my brother. And this is the same photo that you saw on the car windshield? Yeah. And what's so scary is I don't know how they got such a high resolution photo. Then that's clearly his house. And one more thing, my brother only smiles for two things. When he's watching the movie Legally Blonde, or the Broadway musical, of course, and when he's causing serious, sometimes permanent harm on other people. And this is a fair and accurate copy? Yeah. Mr. Cameron, did you ever get on that plane to, away from Midlands? How could I? That's my brother and from the same mom, I want to clarify, and dad. Well, things got bad fast, and not just because someone else was wearing a slutty serial killer costume. thought I'd be the only one. But before we got into the vault, we ran into somebody impersonating a security guard. Uh, what happened when you ran into the security guard? Well, Memphis told me I had to get rid of the guard. I didn't want the situation to get any worse, so, you know, I juked her out. Something like this. <clears throat> Hit her with a left right. Knocked her out. And also, um, I'm only going to be here for one more question, so 
Just pick it up. Mr. Cameron, are you, are you upset right now? I'm a little mad at you. You're mad at me? Yeah. You're not mad at Agent Burke? I'm mad at both of you. Are you being fucking for real right now? You're mean. I need a yes or no to that question. Maybe you can give me a compliment, and I will. You know, I like your glasses. I think they're kind of cool. Really? Yeah, a little bit. You mean that? I do. Okay. Yeah, now, I am. Mad. Mr. Cameron, you're an Aries, aren't you? Oh my God. That's crazy. You know what's even crazier is your birthday. That's March 27th, isn't it? That, oh my God. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so yes, it, it is March 27th. I mean, yeah. Oh, oh my God. All right, I, I need to pull it together and answer something. You, you woke up this morning, didn't you? No. Is this a dream? Is it? Could you pinch yourself just to be sure for me, please? I don't, I don't, I don't feel it. I'm scared. Mr. Mr. Cameron, you're aware that you're the fourth witness to testify today. Mm -hmm. None of the other three witnesses said this was a dream. You didn't ask them. Well, they never said. I think I'm dreaming right now. Yeah, but you just asked me that. But I'm not asking what I asked you. I'm asking what they said. Yeah, but I was saying you didn't ask them, you, you asked me. So now I'm asking you because you didn't ask them. Well, I'm asking you. Okay. This is your mask. Mm-hmm. You, you're Poe Cameron. Yeah. Miss Sands, well, she was the victim in this case. Well, that's what the mask Michael Moore Myers wore in uh, Halloween 3. But that's not what I asked you. I asked you if Miss Sands was the victim, and she was. Yeah, yeah. This mask, it says, I, Poe Cameron, intend to kill Emery Sands. You mentioned a Memphis Reigns. Uh, Tech Chair, if you can get actually a, a more accurate picture of Memphis Reigns. Have you seen the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, Mr. Cameron? Can't say I have. Okay, Tech Chair, can we get that picture up, please? Yeah, court's indulgence while Tech Chair is pulling that up. Uh, the first one, please, Tech Chair. Now, that's Memphis Reigns, isn't it? No, we just showed a photo of that. That's just a different angle. Okay, Tech Chair, go to the next page, next picture for me. Now, that's Memphis Reigns in the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, isn't it? Well, they mainly got his side profile, but yeah, he was in Gone in 60 Seconds. Isn't it weird that Memphis Reigns, your brother, and Memphis Reigns, Nick Cage's character in Gone in 60 Seconds are the same? I don't find it weird. Okay. You're aware that Nick Cage, he was in the, the Croods movie? And Croods 2. That's right, Croods 2 as well. As well as, he was in uh, G-Force too, right? As who? He was a guinea pig, wasn't he? I don't know. Have you ever been a guinea pig? How would I know? Uh, did you try looking in a mirror? You were dating Miss Cosmos? Yeah, well, come on, you can't give me a label. I'm not a labels guy, you know? You'd recognize a picture of Miss Cosmos if I were to show it to you? Probably. Tech Chair, if we can get the very first picture of Miss Cosmos up. Sorry, Tech Chair, that's the wrong picture. Uh, next one for me, please. Tech chair, the, the other picture of Miss Cosmos. That that was that yeah. wasn't that wasn't Miss Cosmos. That was, that was yeah, that was a New Year's party. Is that you in the picture? No. Okay. I thought that was her. No, that wasn't Miss Cosmos. That that that's you and Miss Miss Cos and Miss Cosmos, oh right? God. That's great. Oh. Oh my god. That's a funny story, actually. <laughs> now you're I was. You said you wanted to kill her. I mean with love. You said you wanted to kill her, that's right. With love. Well, you didn't say that. You didn't say, I want to kill you with love. Ask me about the ring. I don't want to ask you about the ring. I want to ask you what you said, and you said that you wanted to kill her. Yeah. Is that because you only lasted 10 seconds? 
Well, it was closer to 15. Sun Yu. Well, you were present for Miss Cosmos's testimony. Yeah. She said it was 10 seconds. Maybe she lied. Because well, it would have been closer to 15. Okay. All right, two pump jump. All right, so on direct examination, you said you were threatened by Agent Burke. <laughs> I don't want to talk more about that. Now, you never told Detective Amani, ah, Agent Burke's terrifying, stop. Now, Mr. Cameron, have you ever, were, were you, were your parents ever being threatened or were you being threatened? I don't like to talk about my parents. You have to, and I know your mom's name is Shelly, but were your parents being threatened? No, Shelly's fine. Okay. Have Spectators. Now, anyone can come and watch this trial. Yeah, just like anyone can find my mom on Facebook, but who would do something like that? Is your mom single? Yeah. Let me, let me write that down really quick. Child of divorce, you got me. Point of order, Your okay. Honor. Um, okay. I don't think a person has enough riz to riz up Mr. Cameron's mom. Your Honor, that's a question for Mr. Cameron's mom and only Mr. Cameron's that's mom. True. All right, I'll I'll stay out of these med this, these meddling love triangles. Now, Mr. Cameron, now all of a sudden you feel safe to talk about what happened. That's what you're saying. I think I trust you now. Okay, I appreciate that. Now you're present for Miss Sansa's testimony. I was. You said that you would kill her. Yeah, I thought we were just playing around. You were playing around when you left her in a pool of her own blood? I thought it was a really accurate costume. Were you in a silly, goofy mood? I was in a really silly, goofy mood. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. No further questions, Your Honor. Well, thank you. How are you doing today, folks? My name is Jonathan Juicy Kebabs Cage. Most of my friends call me June, though. Mr. Cage? Nah, no, Mr. Cage. Do you know why you're here in the courtroom today? Why, yes, of course. I'm here to talk about uh, how I know Poe Cameron and what he has to do with this case. And also, of course, to give everybody here some coupons to Cage's Kebab Emporium. We get a buy one, get one free deal every other Saturday. Of course, while I was running my uh, usual scam, I mean, Kebab Business Venture, Quickie Bites outside of Miller Tower. The reason I call them that is because I tell the customers to eat them quick for maximum enjoyment, but really it's just so that they can't get a refund once they taste the aftertaste. In a way, they make quickie bucks for me. Can you describe how your work went that night? What were they doing? Well, the two of them were uh, arguing, throwing hand gestures at each other. I think there was a, you know, a few of these thrown out, uh, some birds being flipped. Um, I think I heard Cameron say, made me do it. Uh, I'm not sure what that was about. It might have to do with making Cameron buy that god awful Halloween mask that he was holding. But uh, then Cameron just ran down an alley and uh, I didn't see him again. Well, once I saw Cameron run off, uh, my good old buddies at the uh, police department pulled up. That's when I reached for my, uh, my special bribe kebabs on my stand. You see, they work in both ways where even if they aren't willing to leave willingly after they take my kebabs, they're gonna have to step away because of how bad the spiciness is gonna be on them, which will give me time to sk skedaddle on my own. But that wasn't enough that night. And fortunately, because of all the drama that was happening at Miller Tower that night, they shut down my business that night. And then they had the nerve to call me in for questioning a few weeks later to ask me what happened. Objection, Your Honor. Could you... Clip on your objection. Clip on tie. June Cage doesn't know how to tie a tie. Oh, no. You see, that's a misunderstanding. Uh, you see, I spent a lot of my money recently on my upcoming commercial. So I, I did have to spring for the clip on today. Promise you, it's going to be worth it, though. It's airing Wednesday night at 6 p.m. I just asked that June Cage take off the clip on tie since he's lying. No, I'm not lying, but I'm happy to take it off. It's kind of getting tied around my neck, too. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you doing today? Would you like a coupon for Cage's Kebab Emporium? I actually would not. Thank you. Now, uh, right. You'll change your mind later. I don't think I will. I want to. Of course. And first, can I just say I have a lot of respect for all you lawyers and people out there in the legal profession. 
I'm, I'm personally a big fan of that, uh, that famous lawyer from New Mexico, uh, Saul Goodman. And uh, honestly, I'd say I feel pretty comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. And I love just following the genre. So anyways, lots of respect to you. Thank you very much. Now, I want to talk about your business, Quickie Bites. Of course. You're a fraud, aren't you? Eh, fraud is it's such a harsh term, you know? Just because customers don't always get what they want doesn't mean that I'm dishonest. But you, you sell bad food, right? Mm, the good, the before taste is good. The after taste, well, I mean, what can you do about that? That after but taste, it, smell, it tastes bad, right? Well, I see, it seems like a skill issue on the part of the customers, so. Now, you're saying that that, that aftertaste, it tastes like shit, doesn't it? Mm, again, shit is a strong term to use. Manure, maybe. Mr. Cage. Now, your business is called Quickie Bites. That's right. Quickie Bites to make me the Quickie Bucks. And you'd say you're pretty quick? I think so. Like Mr. Cameron in bed? Yeah, unfortunately, I heard about the alleyway. Would you mind showing me how fast he skedaddled down the alleyway? Yeah, of course. My pleasure. You see, I don't got much room in my office, so uh, not sure how much you're going to be able to see of me. But uh, he got up like this and then zoomed right away. So, I don't know, maybe dude's been working out to get a better girlfriend. Any relation to uh, Mr. Nicholas Cage? Distant cousin. And you know that your distant cousin, Nicholas Cage, was in Gone in 60 seconds. Yeah, that's one of my favorite flicks with him in it. I actually got to go to the premiere for that one. Well, that's great. But he was also in Teen Titans Go, the movie. Yeah, that one I liked a little less. Uh, in my opinion, the original Teen Titans was much better than the reboot. Uh, I think the new one was just too childish. But, uh, you know, I always think he's a good win, and you got to support your family. Now, he wasn't, and now he was also in G-Force, right? That is a masterpiece of a movie. I will always stand by that one. You know, the video game is even better on the PlayStation. Yeah. And in that movie, Mr. Cage, he, he was a guinea pig, right? That is correct. He wasn't a human. That's right. Don't you find that odd? Well, I mean, I find the general concept of guinea pigs being a part of a super secret spy organization to stop robot home appliances from taking over the world kind of confusing but you know suspension of disbelief and all that i get my customers to suspend their disbelief when buying my food so because their food is so disgusting right yeah it's such a harsh term they suspend their disbelief so, until the aftertaste they love yeah, so the that, that, taste. that aftertaste is just vile right it can be i am working on that though you mentioned that Agent Sharberg said DLP needing to get them, right? Yeah, something about that. I'm, I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, that, you know. That's right. You don't know what DLP meant, right? Sure would have loved to know. I mean, if it had anything to do with that douchebag De La Pora, then, I mean, I do agree. Maybe he does need to get them or at least scamming his customers, if nothing else. Oh, well, I actually want to talk a little bit about that. You mentioned that Mr. Delaporta scams his customers, right? Yeah, that's right. I got on a wait list for one of his new electric cars two years ago, put my deposit down and everything, still haven't gotten my car yet. But to be clear, you scam your customers into eating disgusting, vile, and in your own words, manure tasting food, right? Again, scam is such a harsh term. The manure taste we're working on, but the rest tastes beautiful. After all, that's how I built my empire. Moving forward, you didn't know what DLP meant, right? Not entirely. So it could have meant dark little penis. Could have. I mean, might might be describing DLP. It, it could have meant dingus lady part. Yeah, could also be describing DLP in my opinion. Both characteristics that he seems to fit. It could have meant dad's little potty. Yeah, that one definitely fits him because he's a nepotism baby. It could have meant drip. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Could it, you repeat that? It, it could have meant Drake loves ponies, right? Could be.
So you're saying that Mr. Della Porta has a dark little penis. Hey, I didn't say that. The, uh, the guy with the mustache said that. Is it your testimony today that you didn't just say that Drake has a... Or... <laughs> Well, I mean, you asked me that that's what it could mean, and I said it could mean it. I didn't say that in that interrogation room. Now, I'm not denying those allegations either, but, I mean, I wouldn't know. Wouldn't be surprised, though. And you wouldn't be surprised because you've seen Mr. Delaporte's dark little penis. Not personally, but I have heard the rumors. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Uh, defense, you have one more witness. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, Your Honor. But if we could pick up the pace here, I actually have a hockey game after this that I'm on my way to. So uh, I understand that that is more important for sure. Yeah, I'll uh, try to be quick with this. Don't worry. Sounds good. All right. Um, I was an well, athlete in college, so you know Harvard's got yeah. some good players. Just keeps adding to the list, doesn't it? All right. Uh, well, if you're ready, you can begin. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls Amari Ebby to the stand. Regrettably. I have my bachelor's in actuarial science and criminology from Midland State College of Science and Agriculture, and also a master's degree in forensic science. Objection, Your Honor. This witness has too many qualifications to be able to run through all of them. Your Honor, I'm actually somebody. in agreement with opposing counsel here. I want to wrap this up. Uh, I thought I thought you said I didn't have actually, any this is sequestered. This is sequestered. Quiet, Coyote. Um. Oh. But, Your Honor, yeah, I can go ahead and tame the witness a little bit. She's getting a little rowdy, you know? So Sounds good. Thank you, defense. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I found several problems with both Agent Burke and Detective Bamani's investigations. Objection, Your Honor, to my own witness. This is incredibly boring. I just ask that opposing counsel make more objections or be kind of more fun here. I cannot sit through this on my own. I actually object to what you just said. I think you should make her more fun. Your Honor, Your Honor I here. think that is it's sequestered, Honor. sequestered, black coyote. Oh. Your Honor, you can do it too, you know. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, Your Honor, yeah, oh, we just got to pick up the pace here. I just want to make that for the record. So, I'll get back to it though. Can but... we just skip to the interesting part? Yeah, can... yeah. Uh, I'll, you you want to help me out here? We can like swap off one question at a time, each other, you know? Yeah. Okay, you go okay. first. I'll, I'll do one. Uh, did you apply methods reliably and standard and like found everything okay? Yeah, I did. I did all of those things. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Your turn. Did you, um, how are you part of this investigation? I was looking into Burke's investigation and I actually found a lot of flaws, but I found, I found one really big flaw. What was the really big flaw that you found? Well, he was wearing the color orange. Whoever said orange was the new pink was seriously disturbed. And why? Well, that's a cross question. Okay, wait. It's okay. I know it's a lot of brain activity. Yeah, I don't think it's a Harvard exercise, so I didn't expect you to get it quite quite away. So, uh, anyway, any other flaws you found in Burke's investigation? Oh, this one a little bit more mild than you know the orange thing, but he did seem like he was targeting de la porta um like excessively maybe he really wanted that dark little penis I'm not entirely sure that's weird well they should have considered other options there's other people out there with dark little penises they should have looked into those as well yeah it, it seemed like he didn't really have his own mind like burke kind of went up to him and was like hey I'm really looking for a dark little penis. And he was like, okay, I'll help you. And that, that was kind of it. So I have some concerns there. Would you go as far as to say Detective Bamani was submissive and maybe even breedable? I definitely think that the evidence points to that. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pass this witness to the other side so they can do their thing. I caught it. I can take it now. Uh, okay. That was a nice catch. We should play hockey sometime. Uh, I'm a defenseman, okay. so I'll I'll get I'll set you up for the for the goals. Don't worry. Acronym. How do you know that DLP stands for dark little penis? You know, you guys cut me off earlier. Actually, 
I, I do have extensive education in, in a lot of fields. And, you know, I've seen so many acronyms come up. It, it was just the natural lead. But, you know, there there's other possibilities as well. What do you think those other possibilities are? Well, I think, you know, D is very culturally significant with Drake. So I think we could follow along that path. But I don't think it'd be super little in that case. And you also mentioned that you had significant proof that Detective Bomani was sub submissive and breedable. What proof do you have of, the, have of this? Objection, Your Honor. I don't like where they're going with this. Uh, I actually, uh, Your Honor, if you wanted to kind of join in on the Harvard exercise that we were doing earlier, uh, I think that would actually benefit this cross a lot because I'm about to take a nap and that's not... That's not on my agenda today. Prosecution, your response? I would be fine if you asked the witness a question. No, no, not just a question. I want two at least. Come on, let's let's be big boys and girls here. Prosecution, if you'd like to continue, uh, whenever I have a question, I'll be happy to join in. Okay, you can go first. You know, if nobody has any questions, I actually, I have one to ask um, the judge, Your Honor. Do you think that orange would be the new pink? I think that is an outrageous statement. It's offensive to the color wheel. It's offensive to the eye receptors. It's offensive to uh, basically anyone who has ever seen, heard, or uh, painted with a color. Hey, Mr. Judge, that was a great answer. If you ever need a Harvard wreck, I got you, man. Don't worry. I definitely need to take you up on that one day. Thank you. I did want to clarify, though, Dr. Ebby. What proof do you have that uh, Detective Bamani was submissive and breedable? I don't think you have any proof. In fact, you have no proof, as you can see the tech chair just shared. Well, first off, you know, this is an individual who's blue. And I, I'm pretty sure we were talking about orange or pink. Um... But it seemed like Burke was really taking that upper, that dominant role model role in the investigation. And, you know, Bamani kind of lacked experience. So Burke being as sex positive as he is, he really, he really kind of took control uh, based off of my analysis. So are you saying that Agent Burke and Detective Bamani were in some sort of relationship with each other? I'm not going to suggest that. that. That's for you to decide. I think... No, no, I think you do want to answer that. I want to hear a little bit more about that. I think that, you know, sometimes, you know, you have puzzle pieces. Sometimes they fit. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes some people are just taking that dominant role and some people are just really submissive and breedable. So um, there there might be some some hint of that. Okay. I have no further questions for you. You yeah, might have one bit uh, more question to fill my two question requirement. Um, would you say that Omega is the opposite end of the spectrum as a Sigma? Well, oh, I know this one. I know this one. Vince, uh, it is your witness if you'd like to speak for it. Yeah, so they were going to say that, uh, you know, it's a science, really. So... You know, at one end of the spectrum, you have the sigmas. Think of it more like an octagon, you know, and at each corner, and then you fall somewhere on the chart. It's a whole lot. Um, I'm going to have to call another expert for that. Uh, the Harvard Law Education didn't quite cover that. Um, I have an objection to that. I believe that attorney Luke Fries is um, being a toxic male because he answered instead of letting the woman answer. Oh, I actually have actually something it. off of that. I think, you know, Mr. Fries, he's... He's kind of projecting a bit. Well, you know, I, I think like he's to... realized his Omega status and is a little fearful. You know, in fact, he even previously mentioned, you know, some lingering feelings towards the Alpha Burke. And I think. I do think he's projecting. Yeah. I would like to, I would like to respect the coyote. Um, yep. Fancy, right. yeah. Yeah. You had a point. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I just wanted to say, 
I am actually the least projector. And the reason I spoke up was because I didn't want her to hurt her voice box because I, like I said, am a feminist. I love Michelle Obama. I liked how she changed the lunch menu, actually. If you're a feminist, name three women. Uh, I'll get back to you on that one. We got him, guys. He just knows too many. Your Honor, um, with that, we rest our case in chief and ask that this witness be excused. 32. Hey, Your Thank Honor, that's okay, but I just ask that I can leave early for my hockey game. I mean, there's going to be some broads in the stand tonight, and I got to make sure I'm on there for warmies. That is a acceptable legal reason, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. And I can so, leave, too? <laughs> no, you have to stay. May I please hold the defendant woke up in the morning and had murder on his mind. Michael Myers' mask, text, blood, and ring, you know it shines. Emery Sands was hating, trying to knock the defendant off his grind. But the defendant didn't let her do it. He got murder on his mind. He had murder on his mind. Members of the jury, this just isn't a song by YNW Mel. This is real. This happened to Emery Sands, and the defendant, he almost killed him. There's yellow tape around Miss Santa's body. It was almost a homicide. Her face is on a t-shirt. And her family's traumatized. The defendant meant to attack her. They brought their fist back and punched her over and over. Her body dropped to the floor and she got blood everywhere. She grabbed the defendant by the hands and said she was afraid to die. The defendant, he told her, don't think I will kill you. There's nothing. It's coming between me and what I'm up to. Miss Sands, she almost died. Blood all over the floor. And that's why we charge the defendant with attempted murder. That means that we had approved to you three things beyond a reasonable doubt. But it's not impossible. Members of the jury, I actually met that burden in a trial I had last week against the defense counsel, all three of them. I'm going for 2-0 here today. You see, we had to prove to you that the attempted murder occurred in Charlotte County. And I was actually just elected as a judge in Charlotte County, which is why I'm wearing this outfit now. And that's what happened. Miller Tower is in Charlotte County. And that's something the defense isn't disputing. So now let's get to how the defendant woke up in the morning and had murder. Now the judge is actually going to be one of my co-judges next year. He's going to give you jury instructions. The defendant's mask, the defendant's word, the defendant said, I intend to poke Cameron and intend to kill Emery Sands. That's pretty clear to me they had murder on their mind. Take that down, please, that chair. Now, the defendant punched like a kangaroo. But kangaroo is an animal. An animal notoriously known for having large arms. Yep, that's the only thing a kangaroo is known for. You see, Poe's a savage. No, there's no, there's he, he's no amateur. Security guard named Emery. The defendant punched her on camera. The defendant might have killed Miss Sands. He wanted to kill her. Miss Sands is bleeding so much, Miss Cosmos couldn't recognize her. Miss Sands is disfigured because the defendant had murder on their mind. And about Miss Cosmos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's how long the defendant lasted with Miss Cosmos. He was mad. He was upset. So he tried to kill Miss Cosmos. Just like he tried to kill Miss Sands. Now, in a couple moments, the defense is going to come up here. They're going to give you a closing argument. It might be a little boring. You might want to take a nap. I probably will. Don't worry. There's nothing important that you need to see. You can take a nap. Just wake up before my rebuttal. You'll want to hear that. But if you listen to her, if you if you choose to, I want you to remember the text messages. How the defendants said they would come up with a story to make this all go away. And the, defendant, and the jury instructions as well. Text here if you can go to the next slide. That if the defendant takes place in a violent act, it was voluntary. Text here if you can take that down. I want you to remember that the defendant woke up in the morning and had murder on his mind. Before we get into my closings, I must ask, are you guys having fun? Because I am having fun. And now, now, why you should not find Poe Cameron not guilty. First, let's look at the team. Threatened, coerced, forced, and not in a good way. 
Got my ass for four magazines, because every time I wake up in the morning, I got murder on my mind. AK-47, Macadamia, Glock, and Nines, and all these pussies, niggas, hating, trying to knock me off my grind. But I can't let them do it, I got murder on my mind, bitch, I got murder on my mind. 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 Cable around his body. The fucking homicide. His face is on a t shirt and his family traumatized. I didn't even need to show up. He just caught me by surprise. I reloaded my pistol, cocked it back, and shot him twice. His body dropped down to the floor and he had to drop from the car. He grabbed me by my hand and said he was afraid to die. I told him it's too late, my friend, it's time to say goodbye. Then he died inside my arms, but all on my shirt. Wake up in the morning, I got murder on my mind. AK-47, Mac and Glock and Nines, and all these pussy niggas hate and trying to knock me off my grind. But I can't let them do it. I got murder on my mind, bitch. I got murder on my mind. 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 I got Members of the jury, this case isn't just a YMW Melly song. Because the defendant woke up in the morning and had murder on his mind. Now in the defense's closing argument, there was a couple things that stood out to me and I actually wrote them down. I took a nap and then I woke up before it. But what was weird is the very first thing that the defense said is that you should find that if you should not find the defendant not guilty. So they agree, find the defendant guilty. But that's not the only thing. Because the defense, he he tried to cook. But instead of turning the stove on, no, he didn't turn the stove on. He turned the timer on. He didn't cook, Your Honor. He didn't have the ingredients. Now they talked about preponderance of the evidence. It, it might be a confusing word, I get it. But that's not their burden at all. No, they can't just show you that it's more likely. They have to show you clear and convincing evidence. They couldn't do that. I'm a judge. I know what clear and convincing evidence looks like. They couldn't do that. So members of the jury, I want you to look at this here. Touch here. Can we get this diagram up, please? Do the math. You see, I'm not a mathematician. I, I didn't go to school to become a mathematician. I, I became a lawyer. Now I'm a judge. So I'll let the computer do it. You can go to the next slide. Poe Cameron equals guilty. Members of the jury, the defendant had murder on his mind. Find him guilty of attempted murder. Thank you.